Aloha guys, Mr. G here. It's story time. For most of my childhood, I grew up on the northeast side of San Antonio, Texas. Our father moved him and the two sets of twins when my brother and I were about to start second grade. Me and my twin brother and our two older sisters, who were also twins four years older than us. Right away, the other kids of the neighborhood knew that our quote-unquote family was different than the others. The first meeting happened in front of our scary house on Coil Hollow. My brother and I were probably dressed in rags, as we usually were. Chris Claflin, Ginny, Ben, and another kid I don't quite remember his name were staring at me, my brother, and our two sisters. Our father had had given us a rare tree, one of those cheap popsicles named after historical figures like Alexander the Grape or Sir Isaac Lime. I remember watching the other kids' eyes go up and down, fascinated with what they saw. You see, my brother and I weren't just dressed in rags. We also didn't have any toys in years, and our father never spoke to us. We were put in speech classes for the first half of elementary school because we could barely speak. No one ever ever spoken to us. Our fathers and sisters basically hated us, and our mom was in a mental institution. For most of my brother and my childhood, we had no one. We were behind mentally, and the last person a little kid wants to play with is someone younger than himself. My brother and I were worse. We may have physically physically been eight years old, but mentally we were more like four years old. We were new to the neighborhood, and after that first meeting, our father made sure our sisters never interacted with the neighborhood kids. But a lot of times, he'd lock me and my brother outside. We were forced to hang out with the other kids, and all their parents pretty much hated the Dirty Brant brothers. The kids made fun of us for looking so poor. My brother and I rarely bathed, and we usually had looked like we've been rolling around in the dirt with brown smears on our face. You know, the kind a mother usually wipes off. Why would we take showers or bathe if nobody ever told us to? Our father never gave us soap. I didn't get my first toothbrush till I was like 12 years old. Where would I get one from? I suppose whenever we visit our mom, she'd have us brush our teeth, but we didn't see her often, and there was a good portion during third and fourth grade when she had full-blown schizophrenia before they locked her in a mental hospital for an additional year. No one told us where she was, and we didn't even know if she was alive. Back to the neighborhood kids. Chris Claflin was their leader, and he was a decent guy. He had older siblings who had already moved out, and his parents raised him right. Even though Chris was a few years older, he saw what kind of life my brother and I had, and he tried to be nice. Chris was much more mature than the other kids in the neighborhood. He was the first person we ever played football with. He also had a full G.I. Joe and mass toy set. All the neighborhood kids would bring their toys over to Chris's yard, and it was a big deal for Michael and me because this was the only opportunity we had to play with any toys. The other kids weren't exactly accepting of me and Michael. Some of the kids stopped letting Michael play with them because they sensed that he was just a little mean. Uh, the neighborhood kids liked me a little bit, but I didn't like sports, and I had limited communication skills. The kids actually called me Gregory 2000 because I read a lot, had glasses, and would talk like a robot. Our father encouraged as very little emotion from us as possible. That's why he made sure we didn't have any toys growing up. To be continued tomorrow, guys. Thanks for listening.